The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and this is Mercury's 154 stroke. She's one of the lightest engines in class, and because of her great power to weight ratio and three liter displacement, she makes a great trade up for those coming from a two stroke hull. I'm going to put it through a full test and see how she does. This is a relatively new model for Mercury, and word is already getting around that there's something special about it. It provides low-end torque of a two-stroke, but with a fuel efficiency that makes four-strokes so popular. And Mercury Marine did a great job of making it saltwater ready. While still offering more parts than a two-stroke, this 154-stroke has a remarkable 18% fewer parts than its chief rival. And it has a three-star carb rating on 87-octane fuel for ultra-low engine emissions. Let's take a look at some of its features on the stand. This 150 horsepower four-stroke engine is offered with a shaft length of either 20 or 25 inches and weighs in at 455 pounds. It can be controlled by a tiller, but standard steering is provided by a mechanical cable. Most will opt for the conventional hydraulic option. In twin applications, the Mercury Power Steering is offered. It has a multi-port electronic fuel injection system, beating her four inline eight valve cylinders and single overhead cam. It has a through-prop exhaust system and is designed to run on 87-octane fuel with up to 10% ethanol. Mercury adds a snorkeling system to the one-piece cowling so in the event of a following sea or just washing down the engine, water does not make its way into the engine. Any water that does get into the cowling is routed out a lower drain. Mercury went with a single latch system for easy removal of the cowl. This engine incorporates a low-maintenance design with the schedule always in clear view. There's even a QR code to scan with your smartphone for accessing instructional videos on flushing, oil change procedure, changing gear case lubricants, and simple troubleshooting tips. And below is the engine mounted trim switch and a flush out port to connect a garden hose to. Continuing down the left hand side, there are large water intakes and a heavy duty gear case means a bigger 4.9 inch bullet incorporated into this hydrodynamic housing. Many things make this 154 stroke saltwater ready, such as the Merck Fusion paint system, aluminum silicon alloys, stainless steel components, integrated bonding straps. The easier to see components are of course the sacrificial anodes located here and here. Moving around to the front, Mercury went with a single stage power trim assembly which saves cost and weight. Back up to the front of the engine, the diagnostic terminal connection is clearly visible in yellow, a color that will indicate any service oriented component. And the main fuses are just above, also clearly labeled. Here's another yellow component, the oil fill over the reservoir that holds nearly six quarts of oil. Around the right side we have the yellow dipstick right next to the oil filter, and it's easily drained through a hose that leads down to a quick connect fitting. Surprisingly, this fitting is connected to a sump, just like in your car. This sump has a radiator on top that maintains the oil at the correct temperature, regardless of the ambient temperature that the engine is operating in. The fuel filter is another yellow service item. It's located just under the oil filter, and it can be changed without using tools. These are the connectors for the SmartCraft digital instrumentation and the analog instrumentation, whichever the customer prefers. Above is the high torque starter connected to the flywheel, and Mercury has started adding a marine grade acrylic melamine top coat to their starters to further add to the saltwater protection. Here's the single throttle body that leads into the scrolled intake manifold, which then leads to the stainless steel fuel reels feeding the injectors. And everyone thinks these fins are to add harmonic sound to the 150, but no. They're simply to allow the cowl to go back in place easier by lining up with these guides on the inside of the cowling. Here's a better shot of the fuel rails leading to the four injectors as part of the multi-point fuel injection system. It joins the air coming in from the intake and then feeds into the combustion chamber. And here's something interesting. Notice how all of the stainless steel bolts have shoulders on them eliminating the need for washers. This is just one more way to ease servicing of the 154 stroke. The unique sound of the four stroke comes from the air baffle located behind this panel. This is why the engines are so quiet at low speed, a big factor especially for someone like a pontoon boat user. Any part that comes in contact with water is treated with a powder coating paint job that has more elasticity and UV protection and it lasts much longer in a saltwater environment. Now let's get on the water and see how she performs. Our test boat had a length overall of 17 feet 6 inches and a beam of 7 feet 9 inches. With an empty hull weight of 1,345 pounds, full fuel, two people, and a 150 outboard, we had a test weight of 2,382 pounds. With the 150 horsepower Mercury four-stroke outboard turning a 13 and three-quarter by 20 three-bladed stainless steel inertia prop, we reached the top speed at 5650 RPM of 53.3 miles per hour. At that speed, we were measuring a fuel burn of only 14 gallons per hour, giving a range of 93 miles. Best cruise came in at 3,000 RPM and 25.2 miles per hour. 
That reduced the fuel burn to a mere 3.2 gallons per hour, which we could keep up for 7 hours and 36 minutes and increasing the range to 191 miles. Most impressive was the 154 strokes acceleration, which plays well into the water sports crossover. We reached planing speed in only 2.9 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds, passed 30 miles per hour within 7.2 seconds, and continued accelerating through 40 miles per hour in 9.3 seconds. Taking a look at handling, adding power to the 154 stroke only caused the bow to come up 8.5 degrees upon acceleration, and we settled into a 3 degree bow high cruise attitude. Seastar hydraulic steering is offered as an option and it really made a difference with effortless handling. I noticed no torque effect during acceleration and certainly not during any of the straight runs at wide open throttle. Even with this light boat, the engine's 450 pound gross weight was barely noticeable. The 150 also provided impressive mid-range acceleration. From our 30 mile per hour cruise seen here, throwing the throttle forward quickly had us outpacing the camera boat. Maneuverability comes from its 120 degree turn radius. And at the end of the day, the single stage trim assembly will trim the 150 completely out of the water in 13.5 seconds. The Mercury 150 probably has the widest applications of any outboard engine in the company's lineup for both saltwater and freshwater use, either single or twin installations. And that's our full test and review of the new 154 stroke from Mercury. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.